Markets get clobbered, the bears are growling. What's up, everybody? Welcome aboard. It's Bubba's Bottom Line, and as always, it's great to be here with you, spending some time. And of course, we've got uh, the winding down of March Madness, the beginning of baseball season this week on Thursday, and the markets are getting clobbered, as we suspected they would, as we've been calling it top since January 29th, which was the absolute top of the market. And of course, uh, we can look at a lot of reasons last week why we're getting under some dramatic pressure, but I, I think there's, there's no bigger story than the magic trick or the illusion that was pulled off by the Fed where they actually hiked rates, but they really didn't hike rates because they continue to suppress and pound down the dollar, which is, again, our belief that that will end up being the black swan or the markets will be their own black swan. So we see dramatic pressure underneath the markets. The Fed did what was expected. But again, the suppression of the dollar is the real story because as the dollar remains low, what that really does is for outside global lending that continues to keep their interest rates low because they're getting a discount to the actual rate, it's just another bunch of, of, of manipulation and non-free markets, which has is, is been the entire story for the last 10 years and possibly longer where we don't have the true free markets. And of course, we'll cover that in my commentary as I had an interesting debate with uh, John Tamney of uh, Real Clear Markets. I will talk about that in my commentary. But in the meantime, the markets did get clobbered last week. And again, I don't think it's any real surprise. In fact, on, on Friday afternoon, I texted out to my folks. I said, we've got a 5% chance that the market could rally back, a 70% chance that we would stay down two to 300, and a 25% a chance that the markets could get real carnage. And of course, Thursday and Friday, we saw some real carnage in the markets. And, and, and as I, they, I like to say, or as the carpenters like to say, we've only just begun. You're gonna see, I think, uh, some very interesting action coming up. Volatility is going to get, I think, even higher than it is right now. I think what you're looking for here is a market that we've said before, you want to look to sell the rallies. You don't want to chase them down here. You want to look to sell rallies in this market because, again, you, you can say that the goose is cooked and you know, you're going to start to see, I think, some major, major carnage uh, coming through here in a lot of these equities. Uh, again, but you want to wait your opportunity. Don't be in a hurry to jump into this market and start to sell because you'll, you'll find yourself in a much bigger problem. But I think really what we've seen here now is the real unintended consequences of a Federal Reserve, of a, 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 a lack of government control of the Federal Reserve. Now, again, the Federal Reserve is a private corporation, but they are tied in. And you can start with this ridiculous bill, this omnibus bill that was signed by President Trump. All right, I, I can't believe he didn't veto it. Now I understand his reasoning, his logic, because of the, uh, because of the the uh, armed forces, because of the army, the navy, and, and so on, uh, our military. But I, I do believe that this is another reason. This is another issue that all it does is create more debt, which has happened in every debt ceiling debate that we've ever had. The outside, the other party always gets to stick something in a bill. They send out a bill that's over 2,000 pages and they pass it six hours later. It's, it's, it's ridiculous, it's a joke. And again, it's more of the same old in, in politics, which is why I believe that not only should the Fed be audited, but the government should be audited. This is, this is beyond ridiculous that we continue to, to, to punish and add on to this debt that will never be able to be paid off, okay? So you wanna, add, you wanna look for reasons why. Well, these are reasons why the markets are in a little bit of trouble right now because you've got the talk of trade wars. Now, again, I don't believe the trade wars are anything that's that big a deal. I believe that A, we are the, still the economic power. We are still the most powerful nation in the world. And do you think, you think that, that, that China doesn't need us for all of the goods that we consume? I mean, the real trade war is not really against anybody, but really China. 
And you think that they don't need us to buy their goods? Where are they going to go without us? This is one of the things that nobody seems to understand. This is the thing that is not built in or written into your economic theory from our genius economists that, that control and manipulate economies and try to put together these, these ridiculous plans that, that you can continue to, to, to create free money and can create deficit spending so that we can continue to grow and let, let the politicians rob us blind and, and capture all the cash. This is something that you can go back and again, if you want to read The Creature from Jekyll Island, this is the things that, that were written that are, you're seeing exactly what's happening right now. And of course, everybody continues to say, well, that's the way we've always done it and that's the way it should be done. And I go, okay, that is a, not the way it should be done and that's not the way we should do it. And of course, you had uh, on Wednesday, we had, of course, Chair Powell, who had maybe a little bit more of a, a hawkish tone, but again, staying with the, 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 the same old, same old, trying to keep the markets dovish. And don't be surprised if somebody doesn't come out this week and, and you know, if, if, they, if they'll call this another potential taper tantrum, all right? This is the free market system, which we don't have. And, and that becomes the middle problems. The, the, the central banks have killed the free trade, all right? This is when you now have a market that only trades off of the value of the currency, which is not a true free market. We're not using the true, a true supply demand model. We're using a money model. But back to the trade war, do you think that, that China is going to, you know, n not need us all of a sudden? Do you think those goods are going to go somewhere else? So they can threaten the farmers and, and, and everybody with what they're going to do with soybeans and, and grains and things like that. In the meantime, did you notice the pricing of grains on Friday, after the initial sell-off to the downside, they closed higher. So do we, do we think the markets don't know? Again, this is something that we always have to understand, that the markets always know, the markets are always right, and the markets right now are telling you that the stock market's going down, that the grain markets are going up, and that's what we have to look at. And, and again, I, I can't stress enough that things will work out, and if you just look at the bigger picture and get away from the economic theory, you will see that the, the things will work out. And, and, and what we really have now is, is President Trump, who is, is flexing our muscles saying, hey, it's time for us to get back on equal and fair ground instead of supplying the rest of the world with everything without getting anything back for it. And I think that becomes the, the, the real story. I think you look at the, the bond markets, okay? Bonds continue to stay flat to lower, interest rates are rising. There is no issue about that. The interest rates are going to go higher. Now, whether the Fed wants to participate or not, that's another story. But the, the, the fixed income traders decided that the rates are going higher. Now, there was a, you know, a slight pause last week. Again, of course, a little bit of flight to quality with a thousand point down day on, or excuse me, 700 point down on Thursday and a thousand for the last two days. So there was a little bit of a flight to quality, but again, the rates are going up, all right? And, and, and sh they should go up. Again, we go back to a very simple equation. If the economy is as good as they say it is, then there should be no, no fear of higher rates because it would mean that we would get things going. But of course, what's going to happen, as always happens, the Fed will again make that wrong decision at the wrong time and create the meltdown. That's that. That will be at the end, and that's when the dollar will take off, and we'll go from what they say is no inflation. Of course, you couldn't prove it by me going to the store, uh, but what they say is no inflation to hyperinflation. And again, this is always a problem. But some of the big stories of the week were Facebook, number one. Now, if you look at Facebook, okay, and and that what Facebook did. Look, as they've as as most pundits and newscasters have said all week. If you're in Facebook, you are the product, right? And remember, that's where these companies make their money is by selling your names to advertisers. So if you willingly give up your names, then you are the product, right? So again, I don't think that Facebook did anything so tragically wrong uh, with, with, with the names and with the information. I think that's what they do. Uh, I, again, that's why if you sign up for that, you are signing up to be to have your name sold. That's why all these companies have you opt in to 
uh, a mailing list. Again, that's so that they, 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 the value of the names is one of the key things that we look at. And that's something that you just need to understand. But the, the key here with Facebook was not that it went down, not that it was bad news, but that typically if the markets were still really strong, they would have absorbed that bad news and Facebook wouldn't have lost 10 or 12% last week. That's the real key to watch is, is how did the market react after it had a chance to digest this. So now the market's digested the information and said, okay, you're going down. And I think that's gonna create some more selling pressure and you could look for, you know, a lot of these tech stocks, tech was really, was really heavy at the end of last week and there was a lot of issues going on with tech. So I think that is something that is just showing you that momentum is dying in the markets for now. Now again, I don't want anybody to get so totally par paranoid or panicked that like they have to sell everything, okay? That is not what I'm saying here at all. I want you to understand that this is just a market function. In fact, Fox called me and had me on the phone on Thursday. I was on Wednesday. They had me on Thursday to talk about what was going on. And I said, look, if you're an investor, you should be hedged. But even if you're not hedged, as long as you're investing money that you can afford and don't need tomorrow, you should not worry about uh, getting, getting out of the market. Again, you should not try to time or, or, or wish the market. It doesn't work, okay? So all of these great geniuses who say, let's get out of the, the uh, risk on, risk off, all that garbage is garbage. It doesn't mean anything. If you like the companies you in, if they are fundamentally strong companies over history, then they will rally eventually. So if you're just strictly a purely an investor, there is no reason to dump the markets. Now, if, you're, if you trade and invest, then you trade the short side. But everybody should consider learning how to hedge. And I can give you a thousand notes from people that sent me last week telling you how good it is to be hedging your portfolio. It's something that you should check out. But in the meantime, the markets are in trouble right here. Now, of course, I'm recording this on Sunday and we'll see how the markets open tonight and we'll see what it looks like. Now there is obviously somebody sent me a bunch of charts that show that this is very similar to 87. Now again, I tell you this, 87 will not happen again, okay? The way that 87 happened, not that we won't go into a bear market, that we're going into, but the actual one night wonder of a 30% a thirty percent sell off cannot happen. It's not, A, it's not allowed because of the circuit breakers. So I wouldn't get myself into a frenzy here. Remember, the reason they do all these things is if the markets get too hepped up and, and going down, then they shut them down temporarily to give cooler heads a chance to rebel because everybody knows that that's usually a buying opportunity. So again, I understand it and I'm telling you that you don't have to worry about that. Now again, do you have to worry about a 30% down over the next six months? Yeah, that could happen, all right? But is it gonna be in one day? No, that's not gonna be in one day. But in, in the meantime, in this period of time, you will have some dramatic rallies that you can have an opportunity to sell. This is the difference now. We have switched from a buy the dip mentality, now we're in a sell the rally mentality. And, and that's a very subtle change because now what you're seeing, you're now seeing all these advisors and pundits, which we said about, talked about this a couple of months ago on this show, that they're still saying, oh no, we're going up, it's a, we're in a bull market where nothing's changed and nothing has happened. Well, a lot has happened, a lot has changed, all right? The markets are breaking down. Stocks are going technically below a lot of their key, their, their, their key support levels. So now you've got a different market, all right? You see volatility continue to pick up. One thing about volatility, the more the volatility is in play in the market, the more the markets are going lower. That is because volatility re equals or creates or shows the fear in the market. Because if you've noticed, and I think this is very important to go back and look, as the markets were going up every day, every day, every dip was bought, there was no volatility, all right? All of a sudden, now we're getting swings in volatility every single day. Those are the things you think about. That's how you look at the market, okay? It's important to learn the market footprint and understand what the market is telling you. The market is now telling you what we've been trying to tell you for a while, and again, it's finally confirming itself in the market that the tops are indeed in, the markets are making lower highs, and every rally is an opportunity to sell. That's what you wanna look for, okay? That is how we gauge the market, is by the footprint. In the meantime, we're gonna step out here for a break. This is Bubba's Bottom Line, Todd Bubba Horowitz, and we're gonna step out and come back in a minute or so, but in the meantime, 
Don't forget to check out my highschoolinvesting.com program. If you want to help educate the youth of America, if you want to help us put together and keep this program going that we've had for seven years, you can go to Patreon, P-A-T-R-E-O-N.com forward slash Bubba Trading. That is where we are now just taking some small donations that we're just trying to keep this whole thing going because it's very expensive and I have financed it myself for seven years and now I'm looking for a little bit of help. And if you do that, I will give you a free week of my advisory service and you can check out what we're talking about and what we're looking at in the markets because again, we're looking to help you. And just a reminder, on April 10th, Tuesday, April 10th, I will be starting a new hedging class. If you have any interest and you'd like to find out more information, go to bubbatrading.com and you can check it out or you can email me direct at bubbat, bubbatrading.com. In the meantime, don't forget to catch The Bubba Show every day at 4 to 5 Eastern at libertytalk.fm. Welcome back to Bubba's Bottom Line. Todd Bubba Horowitz with you. And of course, we've had so many issues that popped up over the last week. And did you notice how the news has now, good news is not good news anymore. Good news kind of holds the market and bad news pushes the markets down. And, and I think that is what we're starting to see right here. But you've got, you know, so much collusion going on with the Fed and with central banks around the world trying to control the dollar, right? That's a problem, right? You've got a potential, you know, was, was Friday, what we call Friday, the Black Friday before the Black Monday. Again, I said that before the break that I wouldn't be so worried about it, but I think you're starting to see all of a sudden gold perked up a little bit. Now, gold's in a range, 1300 to 1365, so I wouldn't get so excited. And again, I am not a believer in gold as a hedge against your portfolio. I'm a gold bull, and I think that everybody should own gold. I think it's a great hard asset, but I do not you think believe that it will add protection to your overall portfolio. I do think at this point, silver is a better buy as well, because I believe that the ratio of 81 to 81 to 1 is way too high. The original ratio was designed to be at 15 to 1, not 80 to 1. So basically, I'm a buyer of silver here. I, I think they're, they're good. I think gold, I would wait. Either it gets through 1365 and then it can break to the upside, or this is just trading in the range. It, it has done for quite a while here. We take a look at the grain markets. Grains had a rough week, but they did manage to rally late Friday. And I think that, A, the trade war and the trade tariffs are something that you thought about, but I guess if we think the world's going to stop eating, that would be a problem. But I don't, I don't actually believe that we're going to stop eating. I think that there's going to be, again, I believe that this is a great play by President Trump. I think it will work out great for everybody, and I think it will free up better opportunities for farmers and for producers and for everybody when everything gets said and done. It might be a little bit painful short term, but I think the long term view is it becomes much stronger and allows us to export even more. So I think that's how that, that works out. But you've got the cattle markets. Now they had cattle had a cattle on feed report Tuesday, excuse me, Friday at, at two o'clock. Now you gotta explain to me one thing, okay? Why in the world does somebody issue or put out a major report at, after the markets are closed on a Friday so that farmers and producers can fester and be aggravated the entire weekend when we got a bearish report? However, I don't think that report was any more bearish than it was already priced in. I believe that the markets are going to rally from here. Now, we've been wrong a little bit on, on this for the last couple of weeks. But I believe that this will show the bottom. And I'm hoping tomorrow they open lower so we, I can buy more. I went away, I went into this report long and I'm gonna stay long here. I think that this is a great opportunity because again, there's this, that report that came out on Friday was nowhere near as bearish as the markets had priced in and as they totally flushed them down the toilet. But some of the other big stories last week, McCabe comes clean. He said he was distraction and, and, and had confusion. Really? 21-year veteran? Okay. FBI had confusion. You know, so it's amazing how we can always say that we were confused or something happened or whatever. You explain to me how that works. Okay. It's, it's amazing how in the highest stress jobs, all of a sudden they became distracted and, and confused. I, I think that that is, uh, uh, you know, just a, a joke. And, and of course, 
as, as we look at what is the end game here now, okay, what will happen, and, and what will happen is what we've talked about for a while, is the markets are going to be under pressure, okay, simple as can be, the markets will be under pressure. Now, again, that doesn't change the dynamic of, of what the compounding effect and what the stock market is, but it is healthier when markets do have sell-offs. It is healthier to see the markets buy and sell because that creates better buyers and better volume and better action going into the future. No, nothing goes straight up, nor do things go straight down, of course, unless they're going out of business. But even companies that go out of business don't typically go straight down. They do have some, uh, as they call, they, they have some late minute rallies, you know, they have the death rattle, but they, they do have things that do happen. But I, I think this is what you wanna watch for now, is watch, for, watch the yield curve, which continues to flatten, all right? And there's a big auction this week, so that could create some more problem. Again, everything that we're seeing is indications of a recession. Nobody wants to talk about that, and if certainly your economists, who are, are just basically live on theory, they can't see this before the trees. You know, you, you have to just figure out what they're going to say, because they're going to tell you what's wrong. Okay, they're going to tell you that nothing, that everything is perfect. And of course, if everything was perfect, they should already be out of everything, and they should be out of this market, but they're not. So that, that's a, a, an issue, all right? You've got a whole bunch of data that's going to start coming out again before earnings season. And we're going to find out that the earnings are not as good as that we thought they were going to be. We're, we're starting to see all of these stocks below their technical levels of support. So all that means is that the markets are going to have a sell-off. But really, you should take this opportunity, and you don't want to be the first dip buyer here. But remember, wait until now. All of these pundits and all of these geniuses that say to you that we're buying, 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 this is the greatest buying opportunity. You know, I listen to it all the time. Greatest buying opportunity we could have right now. Got to be buying this first dip. Well, I would say that sell, I would be more of a seller of the next rally. All right? It's not a dip buyer's market right now. It is a sell the rally market right now because you now have all these advisors and guys trying to benefit from, from this because what happens here, and this is the meltdown that you see, and this is the, the issues you see, is they make their money when your market is in. And when your market money starts to come out, they make less commission. So that's not, they're not as concerned about the market going down until you quit them, all right? But in, if they can keep you in, they can try to keep the gravy train rolling and that's not what we're looking for. Technically, the market is breaking down. It's as simple as that. There's, again, there's gonna be dead cat mark rallies that you'd wanna sell into. Investors, be calm, sit tight because right, there's going to be some more storms appearing. And what you're going to start to watch for is when bad news is really bad news, right? For, for nine years, any bit of bad news, the North Korea attacks, the, the par terrorist attacks, anything, anything that was bad, the markets might have sold off for a minute, and then they rallied. Anything that was good, the market just jackrabbited higher. All of a sudden, what have we started to see, all right? Now, good news kind of pauses the market, and then they come down. Bad news, they just go down, a la Facebook. Recognize that pattern. Recognize what you're seeing because, again, this is this type of market. You see oil. Oil is still in a major fear trade, okay? Now, again, the, the fear trade in oil, all right, is, I think, being driven by OPEC. Now, why? That, that, that is the most confusing thing to me is why, all right? But it is, and I can't change that, right? But I, I'm still a seller of oil, but again, if it gets much above 66, I might have to change my tune. But when I look out one year from now, oil is $10 lower a year from now. This is the same exact formation we saw in 2014. So we'll see how it plays out from there. The cryptocurrencies have been under pressure, but it looks like they found a bottom. Uh, there's a lot of stuff going on. Some are accepting it, Taiwan and some others, and some are trying to fight against it. But I think this goes back to the biggest ordeal is that the governments are trying to figure out how to tax it. The reason they don't like decentralized things, the reason they don't like all this is because they can't figure out how to tax all that money that is being churned around. And again, that's the whole issue here. They have no control over that currency. So I think that's something that you have to just understand 
and look for is what does it mean? And I think that, again, I think that you've got to be careful in this space, but I do think it is real. I think that it's going to be very much accepted, and I think that you can continue to look at buying cryptocurrencies, the ones that are major, and, and continue to play in that market because they, to me, are the new alternative investments and have a great opportunity to succeed. And of course, there's been some great stories and of, of, of things. And of course, I talked to a lot of people on the Bubba show about cryptocurrencies. I talked to actually a couple of developers of those. And I, am, I have converted myself from a non-believer to a believer. And again, I would not take a lot of money, like, you know, some people are saying, well, 25%. I think five, three to 5% of your investing capital should be invested across the, the cryptocurrency world. Because I think that is the future between the, the blockchain technology and the cryptocurrency. And what we're going to see, I think you're going to start to see a lot of this start to come into play in, in some of these new IPOs. Because I think what they're going to, what the companies are going to do now, instead of issuing, they're going to kind of cut out the investment banker potentially using ICOs. So there's a lot of things happening in this space. And again, it's never bad to be early as long as you can afford to be wrong. That's the big key. If you can afford to be wrong, it's never bad to be early. We're going to step out here for a break. This is Bubba's Bottom Line, Todd Bubba Horowitz, and we'll be right back after the break. Hello, everybody. Remember, check out uh, my high school investing program, and I thank all of you who have contributed in the past. It's, it's really wonderful, and we're really trying to go. We've actually got up to over 400 high schools now. We're actually we're trying to obviously get 40,000, but it takes capital, and we're continuing to work that, but we do give away everything free. And I urge you to check out the website, highschoolinvesting.com, to kind of see what we're doing. I think it's a great program. I think it's really base, and I think that you can really help others as well as yourself. And of course, if you want to help me out, you can go to Patreon, P-A-T-R-E-O-N dot com forward slash Bubba Trading. And of course, don't forget to catch the Bubba Show every day from 4 to 5 Eastern at LibertyTalk.fm. Now back to Bubba's bottom line. Welcome back. This is Bubba's bottom line, Todd Bubba Horowitz. And of course, it's time for my little commentary. And, you know, I had a very interesting week myself. Uh, I was actually on Friday, I was put on uh, in a debate with uh, John Tamney from uh, Real Clear Markets, uh, an ex uh, uh, Goldman Sachs guy, an ex JP Morgan guy, I think. And of course, uh, we got into the debate of free markets. And of course, uh, as typical as I, I see, a, another economist does not understand what a, really a free market is. And I think that what we see here is if you take the economists and you added and put them end to end and you threw them in the middle of the Sahara Desert, they couldn't find sand because it doesn't fit their theory. All right. The free market system, the only free markets we have today right now are in the cryptocurrency space. All right. Because those markets are open 24 hours a day, seven days a week. And nobody is nobody is is manipulating those. Now, certainly customers, buyers and sellers can manipulate it with capital but they're not manipulating with legislation or with devaluation. And I think that's very important. And, and the discussion on free markets is what is happening with what the governments are doing, the free traders. And, and again, I believe that this is a great thing for us to do because it's about time that we quit get giving away all of our money. And it's about time we quit being in a, in a major deficit to everybody else when we are the economic power. We are the biggest customer of every nation out there. Do you not think that there are going to be some changes, some adjustments made to make this truly a free market system and allow us to buy in and buy in and sell? You know, a lot of the places that we sell to, we have quotas of how much we can sell. In the meantime, coming in, there is no quotas. So you have to change the dial. You have to change the model. Now, with Larry Kudlow coming in now and replacing Gary Cohn, I believe that he's on board with the theory of what President Trump is trying to get done, which is just simply get the markets to be free and fair instead of phony and fixed. Because the markets we had before were not necessarily free markets. They were more dictated by the monetary policy because of the dollar, the currency. How many times have you heard these major companies whine about, well, the dollar is too expensive, so we can't do any exporting? Well, again, I never understood that. Anyway, to me, that's hog. Uh, poppycock. But in the meantime, it is what it is. All right. Let's get, let's let, let's give this a chance 
to work. This is not Hoot Smalley. This is not going to be what George Bush tried to do in 2003. This is a whole new presidency that says, hey, it's time that we got on a fair and equal trade all the way across the board. And there have been some shells dropped already. But in the meantime, you really watch the overall markets. And if you watch the markets in general, forget about the equity market. Everyone say, well, the equity markets are down because of all this. How about the equity markets are overbought to begin with? How about they're down because of Facebook? They're not down because there are tariffs or threats of free trade, all right? They're down because the markets were overvalued to begin with. They were down because interest rates are going higher. They are down because there is some panic and fear. And maybe some of that panic is coming from the trade. But in the meantime, the trade war, which will never get in the full bloom, I assure you, in my opinion, will be resolved. But we will get on more of a fair and equal footing with other nations so that when we do trade, we won't have the, all the penalties that go along with it where we continue to be in, in deficit against other countries. And I think that's the more thing that we need to look at and give this a chance to work as it should work. And I think you'll find that China will come to the table and I think that we will work this out where things will be better and we will have an opportunity to sell more goods of ours across the border and we will get a better price on the goods coming in, into this country. I think that this will work out extremely well. And I think that's one of the reasons that Larry Kudlow signed on because he is against the tariff part of it. He is against the trade war. But why else would he sign on to be with Trump if he didn't believe that this was going to work out to go back to the free trader model? Okay. So if we can get true free trade, which I think is what the intention is of this, I think it works out great. And I think that my, my debate with uh, Mr. Real Clear Markets was just uh, somebody who was trying to continue with economic theory, which is not the real world. So hopefully they will wake up and we will wake up in the real world understanding how the real business model works and that everything cannot be put out in theory and that you have to understand real practical experience, which is just simply known as having a little common sense. This is Bubba's Bottom Line and that was my commentary and everybody have a great week. Uh, Got NCAA basketball today if you're around, if you get this early enough. And, of course, I think, I think you look at Duke and Villanova to both win today. That would be my selections. In the meantime, have a great week, everybody. Thank you so much for joining me. We'll see you on the daily updates. Bubba's bottom line. Have a great week, everybody. See you later.